the dust has settled on week two. The college football playoff out there on the horizon. They're eventually going to start doing that selection show where they say, oh, this is where the college football playoff rankings stand. We're going to give you our college football playoff picture rankings right now. Full disclaimer, these are not projections as to what we think the college football playoff will look like. Rather, these are rankings as it pertains to the college football playoff currently through two weeks of the season. We're still weighing a little bit of what we believe to be true about these teams, but we're factoring into a lot more of what we've seen so far through two weeks of the college football season. So if you're a college football sicko, welcome home. Make sure you're subscribed right here to this show, The Hard Count, the On3 YouTube channel. Want you all a part of this. No hot takes, no additives, no, no clickbait, just college football. The way that you want it discussed because we believe it's the best sport on the face of planet Earth. So let's get right to it. In the 12 spot, we wholeheartedly believe this will be a G5 team. Even though they lost yesterday, I think Boise State proved they are the best G5 team in America. I had my questions about them coming into that game against Oregon because of how they played defense against Georgia Southern. Are they perfect? No. But if we are trusting our eyes, if we are using the eye test and talking about the best G5 team in America, I have a difficult time not putting Boise State in that spot by how they played Oregon. Played them to a three-point game. Uh, you can make an argument that Boise State, you know, at different points maybe should have uh, found ways to win that game. But all that's to say, Oregon was a top 10 team last week, and Boise State took them down to the very last place. So Boise State, for me, the 12th best team, or the G5 rep, if you will, the 12 seed when it comes to our college football playoff picture rankings after week two. Now, I have Oregon at 11, and I told you last week I am not yet selling my stock on Oregon. However, I am starting to uh, get a little bit nervous about them because this is two weeks in a row now, if you're the Oregon Ducks, where you have not played up to your potential, up to your standard, up to your roster talent. In Boise State, I just said they are probably the best G5 team in America through two weeks of football. Um, important to note, they're still a G5 team. Oregon still should have handled them at home. And so you pair last night's performance with the way they played against Idaho. Again, I'm, I'm not selling my stock just yet, but I am understanding now that the, uh, the price of that stock, the longer I hold on to it through two weeks, is starting to dwindle. So Oregon at 11 right now, they have a ton of runway, still undefeated. Everything they want is still in front of them. But uh, based on the eye test, not yet bringing enough to the table to have me put them higher than 11 right now. Now, Penn State, we have at 10. Some good, some bad through two weeks. They came out swinging against West Virginia. On the road, offense was explosive. And then yesterday, yeah, they scored a lot of points, but like it was Bowling Green. It, it shouldn't take that kind of an effort. It, it shouldn't be a one-score game against Bowling Green. We shouldn't be checking the ticker and like, whoa, what's going on with Penn State? Why are they in a game like that? I understand it's one game. Something to be said for finding a way to win when maybe you're, it's, not, it's not your best day. Uh, for me, I have them at 10 right now. Keep an eye on Penn State. Two different sample sizes so far through two weeks of the season. I got Utah at nine. Cam Rising, from everything that we are hearing and seeing right now, the hand is going to be okay. If you're a Utah fan, your heart stopped a little bit yesterday when uh, you saw him have that injury. Even with that being said, I still like Utah a lot. Going to learn a lot about them uh, during the month of September with uh, the stretch they have. Baylor, still not sure what they are, but you would have liked to see Utah be maybe a touch more dominant against them. But still, Utah got him as a top 10 team. And uh, as long as Cam Rises is playing quarterback for them, all he does is win conference titles. So Utah at nine for me this week. Now, Tennessee, I mean, just Coke and Mentos operation exploded this week and they are shooting up our rankings. I got him at eight. I mean, they 52 to 10 to NC State. That defense, you think about you know, Tennessee, you think about Josh Heupel, think about offense, think about wide split, think about quarterback play. You better start factoring in the defensive side of the football for them. Because the way they were flying around, getting after Grayson McCall at NC State, the way they were wreaking havoc, the way they were arriving with bad intentions, that was a very different temperature of Tennessee defensive football that we've seen. That's got to fire up. And you pair that with the fact that you have, and I say this now, not saying he's the best quarterback Tennessee's ever had, but physically the most gifted quarterback to ever suit up in Knoxville behind center. Again, Peyton Manning's the best quarterback of all time in Tennessee. No dispute there. 
But Nico and his physical giftings, the way he runs the football, his arm talent, his mobility, all those things, Tennessee is going to be an extremely tough out. I still think they're a college football playoff team. We have them at number eight on our playoff picture rankings as of this week. Now, USC, we got them at seven. And uh, they're just now, I think, reaping the reward of their, uh, their LSU victory based on these rankings as we've gotten a chance to get a little more data on everyone else. Uh, y'all, don't look now. They allowed zero points against Utah State. I know it was Utah State. Don't I mean don't don't get it twisted. That's not still the uh, you know the litmus test for your USC defense. But like that's two weeks in a row now. We've seen the USC defense show out. Miller Moss again. I love his story. I love that he stayed at USC. Doesn't count for anything when you get on the football field. But the way that he has taken that time that he spent not being the guy at USC. The way that he clearly put in the work to have the successes, the successes he's having now on the football field, uh, I'm excited to watch USC football this year. Surprise, surprise, Lincoln Riley has a dude at quarterback. It is what it is. They're on a bye, and then they get Michigan in the future here. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the vibes are high in L.A. again, and that's exciting. Miami at number six. I'm still factoring in a lot of uh, that win over Florida. I just, I cannot get out of my mind watching Cam Ward jog to walk out of bounds, just having the epitome of, I mean, cool, calm, and collected in that football game. Handle business against Florida A&M. They're, again, reaping the rewards of some other teams not putting their best foot forward based on these rankings. But Miami now, I, I think they're the best team in the ACC. I don't think that's a discussion right now. And uh, they're going to be a problem for everyone else in that conference. And then when they get to the college football playoff, which I believe they will, uh, Miami is going to be a tough out for everyone because of that roster they now have in Coral Gables, the Mario Cristobal roster that he's been working towards since he got the job at Miami, and uh, who they have playing quarterback, again, is a game changer for them. And the game changer they've been missing for the last couple of years. I got Alabama at five. Yes, they played with their food a little bit too much against USF. Something to be said for being able to bow up and find a way and have the showing they had in the fourth quarter. That defense is still coming along. Um, you hope they're able to play their best football when it matters, especially end of September when Georgia comes to town. I'm really impressed by Jalen Milrow. He's just, I mean, he's an adult. There's no other way to say it. He's an adult. He didn't panic. Didn't get uh, anxiety when things got a little bit tight. Like, let's not forget now, this USF team is the same USF outfit coached by Alex Golish that took uh, Alabama to a 17-3 game last year. Now, Jalen Milrow didn't play in that game, but I'm just saying now, maybe uh, take that USF win with a grain of salt because last year Alabama played that game, went on a tear, and uh, then won the SEC and was in the college football playoff. So, Alabama for me at number five. If you have them lower than that, more power to you, but I have them at five. Ole Miss at four. JD, they haven't played anybody. And so... They're passing the tests the way they are supposed to pass them. Throttled Middle Tennessee yesterday, uh, 52-3. to Jackson Dart looks like a Heisman contender. Ole Miss is living up to everything we said they were in the offseason. And again, you said, hey, J.D., but they haven't played anybody. Y'all, I'm just saying there were a lot of teams that didn't play anybody yesterday and uh, struggled. Ole Miss, checking boxes, moving on. Cannot wait to see what they do in the future on their schedule. Now, Texas at three, you could make a strong case for Texas at two, or if you want to go based on best win, put them at one. I mean, do what you want to do there. I have them at three because the two teams ahead of them just have handled business so far. But Texas, man, verified themselves as a college football, not just playoff team, like a national title contending team yesterday. Took Michigan to the woodshed at their place. Physically, they were the more dominant team. Steve Sarkeesian had everything working yesterday. Quinn Ewers showed why he is a, uh, or showed that he's a three-year starting quarterback at Texas. Had had everything that he wanted in that offense. The RPO game, the play action. He had the mobility going. Like, Texas, with the way they have that roster replenished, which give a lot of credit to Steve, to Steve Sarkeesian, and what Quinn Ewers is going to bring to opposing defenses every single Saturday, Texas will be a force. And they, uh, I mean, I don't know who's going to win the SEC between Ole Miss, Texas, and Georgia right now. That is, and Alabama, and Tennessee. Like, it's going to be a fun conference, man. Lock in. Who would have thought? The SEC, an entertaining product of, uh, of football. But Texas, you can't ignore what they did yesterday. Made a statement. Verified themselves, again, as a college football, not just playoff contender, but national title contending team. Ohio State at two. 
Like, I mean, it is what it is. Like, they, they handled Western Michigan. It was one of those games where everybody gets a rep. Everybody gets to hopefully show up in the box score. You get, you know, some pictures to throw on your Instagram if you're a guy that was a reserve. Just doing what they do. We're going to see what they are in the future here. They don't really play anybody until they go to Michigan State. And even then, it's like, ah, Michigan State, it's a road game. We'll see. Uh, they play Iowa as well here pretty soon. But, like, so far, like I said with Ole Miss, checking boxes. A lot of other teams didn't do that yesterday. Had a couple of their fan bases sweating it out. It is what it is. Ohio State, number two for me this week in our playoff picture rankings. And at number one, we got Georgia. They, I mean, they made a statement that first week against Clemson. It was a snoozer yesterday against Tennessee Tech. They uh, are at Kentucky. Uh, then they're at Bama. So things are about to turn up a little bit here for Georgia. And I know Kentucky didn't look great against South Carolina. I'm just saying, you got to go to Kentucky. Kentucky uh, typically gives Georgia a pretty decent game. So Georgia at number one, I don't think there's any dispute about that as of right now for me. But even with that being said, uh, Georgia will have some good resistance here in the future. So, to recap it for you here, our G5 rep, we'll have them at that 12 spot right now, given these playoff picture rankings. I got Boise State, Oregon at 11. Not selling the stock, a little bit nervous, but not selling the stock. Penn State at 10, some good, some bad. We'll see what they are in the future. Utah at 9, would like to see more dominance, but still, Ken Rise is playing quarterback. I'm not ignoring that. Tennessee, statement kind of win over NC State, got them at eight. USC at seven, the LSU juice, and then making uh, a, another uh, solid performance against Utah State, a reality, got them at seven. Uh, Miami at six, Alabama at five, Ole Miss at four, Texas leaving zero doubt with what they did in the big house, have them at number three. Ohio State at two, checking boxes, and Georgia, the best team right now in college football for us, and number one in our college football playoff picture rankings. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at JD Piquel. Subscribe to the channel here. Let me know what your playoff picture rankings look like. Not your predictions, but your, your playoff picture rankings through two weeks of the beautiful thing that is two weeks of the college football season. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.